What's good, y'all? It's your boy, Mixtape Moth, and today I want to talk about three dope projects that I've been rocking with but didn't get to do formal reviews for that had dropped over the past couple of weeks or so. But first, make sure to smash up the like button and please subscribe to the channel. So the first one is Hus Kingpin's Bjork Kingpin Side B. Now, of course, Hus Kingpin is one of the hardest working uh, most consistent and most creative artist in the game at the moment. He is back with Side B of Bjork Kingpin, a conceptual project inspired by the Icelandic singer, songwriter, and producer Bjork. It contains 10 tracks, just like Side A, but it's slightly shorter at just over the 20 minute mark. Instrumentally, stylistically, and sonically, it is a continuation of Side A. Hus continues to take us even deeper uh, into his hazy and psychedelic journey. But now I wanna hit y'all with some of the highlights. The opening track, Mushroom, is a hallucinogenic banger uh, with a haunting and demented beat where he is giving us heavy shroom talk. To say it's a trippy track would be a bit of an understatement. Waterfalls has a ghostly and atmospheric backdrop. The vibe is very surreal, almost like you could envision waterfalls in some utopic world. And Huss has some really standout bars like, I wrote a pagan slow jam, Russian cream, smoking Kiev, dudes thought I hated Ukraine, damn, gun kicking got pushed like a Lupe fan. The track Venus Was a God has some magical keys and dusty drums. This features his comrade Smooth, who does his thing with his slower and deliberate flow. Hus gives us some raunchy bars, but this duo has a natural chemistry together. Flight Posit with Cashmere P is another standout. This has Hus. And Kashmir P trading fly rhymes over a lush and dreamy soundscape. The sample is buttery smooth, but a little glitchy. The outside world with Raka from Dilated Peoples is another highlight that goes into more psychedelic rock territory. It is on here where we get some of Huss's best bars on this project, like for my predecessors, my pen's a pioneer in this modern rap science. I'm in alliance with dead giants who fled years ago when the earth fired. So I was getting somewhat of a killer priest meets prodigy vibe to these lyrics. And lastly, Superman Wavo vs. Supreme is a menacing boom bat banger with a dope appearance from Supreme Cerebral. I just like the hardcore and aggressive style of Supreme juxtaposed with Huss's smoother and subtler flow. Oh, there is that ill competitive essence to this record and the beat was hard as nails. As a whole, I found side B to be just as consistent as side A. I really enjoyed the bizarre, dreamy, and eclectic production throughout and I feel Huss even turned it up a notch lyrically on this one. But in total, both represent a four mic project that will likely be one of the most creative releases to drop in 2022. The second project is Ito's Table for One EP. It's just under 15 minutes with only five tracks. The production is handled by the Boston producer, Michelangelo, who has done beats for artists like RLX, The Cloth, and Primo Profit. But this is the grimy, Rochester, New York rapper and producer's first release of 2022. And it must be stated that Ito has one of the most sinister and grittiest voices in the game at this time. Now, Ito had a very prolific 2020, dropping almost as many projects as 38 Special. But just like 38 Special, he had a really low key 2021. But hopefully, the two will have more of an active. Uh, 2022 on the music front. So Michelangelo provides Ito with an attractive batch of cinematic and string heavy boom bap beats. There are drums, thankfully, and an overall grim mafioso quality to these instrumentals. Some highlights include Beautiful Struggle with its darker orchestral production. Dirty Whiskey Bottles, in contrast, has a smoother and sparkling instrumental, but the bars are as gutter as ever. Gold Plates with Crime Apple has more of a hardcore soul assassin's flair, whereas the closing track, Cucci and Nando with Este Nac and Primo Profit, has the most 
cinematic beat on the EP. The dusty Spanish sample was a nice touch. And it seems that Este Knack and Ito were both competing to see who had the grimiest sounding voice between the two of them. So overall, it's a dope 15 minute EP with no skips. Hopefully we will hear much more from this Hell's Roof representative for the remainder of the year. And lastly, I wanna talk about this new album from the West Coast rap group Coast Contra called Apartment 505. So this was my introduction to Coast Contra as I never heard their names prior to checking for this release. They are a crew of four MCs coming out of California with the exception of one hailing from Philly. A fun fact about Coast Contra is that two of the members are actually the sons of the legendary West Coast rapper Razkaz, which is super dope that they are following in their father's footsteps. Now I'd say there is something about this crew that reminds me of a mashup uh, between let's say, Hieroglyphics and Farside meets the Beast Coast Collective, specifically Pro Era and Flatbush Zombies. That was just the feel that I was getting from these guys. They obviously pay homage to a traditional old school sound while also managing to put a modern twist on the thing. The production is mostly West Coast boom bap inspired, but there are some elements of trap and jazz rap thrown into the mix too. Now, in all honesty, I'm not too familiar with who is who just yet, but just know with this project, you were getting a lot of great flows and synergy as they bounce off of each other's verses pretty well. Also, there's a sense of urgency and hunger to their deliveries and topically, you get a bit of diversity also. Some highlights include Get the Worm, which is a hustling anthem. Air Force One is a smooth banger about their focus and love for the grind. Pimpin' Benjamin is a dope conceptual record about self-sufficiency and how to achieve generational wealth in this capitalist system. It's a smart record with a groovy jazz instrumental. Then there is the up-tempo horn laced banger 505 where they let you know a little bit about where they come from. And there's a dope beat switch on here as well. We get some sharp social commentary on the track Queen and Slim. On here they address police brutality over some somber soul production and the hook from BJ the Chicago kid is pretty stellar. I also like Friends where we learn more about their backgrounds, family struggles, and aspirations to make it as a crew. And the closing song Pangea which has very aggressive cypher-like flows over this beatbox sounding instrumental. Overall, I was digging the energy and flows that these guys brought to the table. It's always great to hear a new rap crew uh, who is not only refreshing, but I think has quite a bit of potential moving forward. It's definitely a slept on release that I wouldn't recommend people sleeping on anymore. But yeah, those are three dope projects that I've been playing a lot recently in the comment section. Let me know some of yours. It's your boy Mixtape Moth. I'm signing out, but be sure to hit the like button and please subscribe. As always, it's peace and blessings. One.